Hello everyone, welcome back to Switch Up. This is a series where we basically have a look at some of the JRPGs, RPGs and adventures that are coming out over the next few months on Switch. We're going to give you 10 and tell you a little bit about them because they look quite interesting. Yeah, the vast majority of these, if not all of them, are coming out relatively soon. So we're looking at the, the next couple of months, I would say, in terms of release dates. Yeah, just to let you know what's coming, basically. All right, what are they? Well, let's find out. First up then we've got Iden Chronicles 100 Heroes. Now this is the sequel to the prequel that we reviewed on the channel that was Iden Chronicles Rising. This is a fully fledged RPG that builds on the characters that you'll meet in those games, one of the coolest of which is a kangaroo with a buster sword. <laughs> Basically the buster sword from Final Fantasy. <laughs> Not the first uh, kangaroo to star in a game. You had one in Streets of Rage 3. Nice. With boxing gloves on. The best games have kangaroos. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> but the story goes that the Golden Empire have edged out all of the other nations and discovered a new technology that then amplifies their magical abilities and they're looking through the land to try and get an artifact that's going to make them even more powerful. Yeah, I can kind of already see where this is going. It's not going to end well. No, it never does. It never does, but we will have a review of that one out as well. There is a physical of that one being released, of course, and that releases on the 24th of April. Then from Square Enix, we've got Saga Emerald Beyond, which launches on the 25th as well. Now, there is a massive demo for this, and I will say on that note, Square Enix are doing the right thing with demos. Like, they're releasing some massive big demos that actually carry over progress. I like that. Yeah, that's a really good way to do it, isn't it? It gives you the incentive to keep going and mm. know that you don't have to start again when the main game comes. Now this one features 17 different worlds that you'll travel around from what's known as the Junction, and there are six different leading characters. Yep, the blurb goes on to say that Emerald Beyond has the greatest number of branching plots of any game in the Saga series thus far. And I have played a few of the Saga games, I must say, going you know way back always enjoyed them. It goes on to say that you'll be acquiring abilities through the Glimmer system, placing your allies tactically, and you'll be able to perform devastating chain attacks. Yeah, so go check out a demo if you're interested in that one. That launches on the 25th of April. Ones that I'm not entirely sure about, I've got to be honest, are the class of Heroes games. These are remasters, so I'm guessing they have some following from back in the day. But you've got the Class of Heroes 2G remastered, as well as Class of Heroes Anniversary Edition, both launching on April the 26th. And these are RPG dungeon crawlers of old. As with so many of these, you're a student, this time at the Particus Academy. The Particus Academy, who comes out with this stuff? <laughs> yep, and you'll be building a party of six students in order to storm the labyrinths with. There are a number of different classes, 18 in fact, each with their own unique skills as you would expect, and there are over 100 labyrinth maps with 250 different enemies. Nice. The only labyrinth we stormed with six mates was the Weatherspoons pub. <laughs> <laughs> that did not go well. No. Then you have got a, a veritable smorgasbord of uh, Neptunia games coming out. Smorgasbord, is that the right word? Yeah, that'll do. Nice. Um, there's four of them. I'm not going to go into details of all of them because I can't be bothered. But this one here is the Neptunia Game Maker Revolution, R, or R Evolution. I wonder if that's anything like the other Game Maker we've got on Switch. Quite possibly. That one comes out on the 14th of May, and then you have three that drop on the same day, which are all from the same subseries by the looks. You have Hyperdimension Neptunia, Rebirth 1, 2, and 3. Now one that I do really want to talk about after those is the uh, Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door which is releasing on May the 23rd. Now this is interesting because I've actually played this game, the original on the, is it GameCube or the Wii? This was on the GameCube. Yeah, I've played that in the last six months. Right. I haven't finished it. I didn't. I kind of got to a point where I was like, actually, do you know what? It's coming out on the Switch. Oh, I, wait. I, I don't want to finish yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. I've never played this one in particular. I've played the first one, which was on the N64. Yeah. And I, I think I've played the Wii one, which was different. That was a bit more platformy. Okay. From what I remember, at least. Uh, but yeah, this one is very well loved. Uh, most people would tell you this is the best in the series. Uh, I just didn't play the GameCube very much. I kind no. of drifted away from gaming at that stage in my life. So it'd be nice to play this one, actually. Yeah, it's that art kind of art style that holds up. It's completely timeless. It looks amazing. Yeah, it does look lovely. Very clever idea of Nintendo's going back to then, you know, to uh, to go to that like paper-like mm. character that, you know, when you turn, you can see their paper thin. And the humor in these games, from the ones I've played, is on point. That one releases on May the 23rd. 
One that I think you'll be interested in, Glenn, is Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance, which I believe is an extended cut of the original game, but then an entirely different story path that you can take called, the, well, the Vengeance Route, or the Canon of Vengeance, I think they call it. Yes, yeah, Shin Megami Tensei 5 is possibly my favorite RPG on Switch. It's definitely up there. Bravely Default 2 will be another one for me, but this uh, is gonna add a, you know, a nice big chunk of new content, which is lovely for those that have finished the game or for those that maybe were on the fence. This is another incentive to pick this one up. It's great anyway, so to have the original game and new content is definitely worth picking up. Yeah, the new content also includes new abilities and powers by the looks of it. One of them known as Dart. <laughs> Dart power. <laughs> 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 What's that going to be? Who knows? Let's find out, Glenn. <laughs> we'll find out soon. This one comes out on June the 14th. Following on from that in July, we've got The Legend of Heroes Trails Through Daybreak. It feels like there's about 412 Legend of Heroes games, but I do really <laughs> like them. I just wish they hadn't left the isometric art style that they had in Zero. I, I loved that, I thought it was great. Mm. This one says that the Spriggan's life is but one of many professions that has emerged from the Calvard Republic. Now, if you've played the games, some of that may make sense to you. To everyone else, I apologize profusely. It is one of those series where they link to each other in small ways, even if you can pick them up, you know, from different points. Sounds like there are different professions like detective, negotiator, or bounty hunter, which might mix things up nicely. Anyone that tries to do their own spin on job systems, you know, that, that can really add a lot to an RPG. Yeah, it's a well-worn trope by now, isn't it? So anything new is, uh, yeah, it's nice to experience. That one releases on July the 5th. Now, Reynartis isn't a game I've seen before at all. This one releases on July the 25th, and it just caught my eye, really, um, on visuals, I've got to be honest. It's based in Shibuya, Tokyo, where the inhabitants fear magic, and I'm guessing that's probably where you come in. It's an action RPG where you play as a young wizard. <laughs> that word will never not be funny now, I'm afraid. <laughs> it's Ian McKellen's fault. It really is. <laughs> now, this is Furyu's next big project, so that's kind of another reason to keep your eye on it. They're known for doing excellent RPGs, and it looks a lot higher budget, I think, than a lot of people thought. Now, I, I remember actually seeing the trailer for this, and the comment section was just people saying, my goodness, this actually looks incredible. So we'll be keeping our eye on this one and making sure we bring you a full review. It does launch on all major platforms on July the 25th. One that's due to come in 2024 as well, and it doesn't have a release date, so I probably shouldn't put it in, but it looks good, <laughs> so, so it's going in. It's Decopolis. Now this is developed by Level 5, that's another thing that caught my eyes. There are certain developers that just do good JRPGs, and uh, yeah, these guys know how to make one. Now the main character is a rookie detective named Harvard, which is quite funny. <laughs> I don't know why it's funny, but it's just not the kind of name you'd expect. And he's hunting down criminals in an open world city. That's another idea that I don't think many RPGs go fully you know, open world within an area like that. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it says you'll travel back and forth between physical and virtual realities, which is, uh, again, a nice trope to have in a game if it's uh, if it's done well. Yeah, absolutely. Virtual reality. That was my Jamiroquai. Virtual reality. Oh, it's insanity, insanity, isn't it? Yeah. Works, though, doesn't it? Well, I mean, it sounds the same, yeah, I suppose. <laughs> That's what you're going for. It rhymes, yeah. Da, 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 da. What song's that? That's Deeper Underground. Ah, uh, he knows. He knows. Bad film. Good song. Great song. Yeah. Terrible film. Terrible. Terrible. So that's it. Those are 10 RPGs that are coming out over the next few months. Let us know if we've missed any. Well, we definitely have missed some because we skipped them because they look rubbish. So let us know <laughs> if there are any that you think, actually, you shouldn't have skipped those. They're probably quite good. <laughs> yeah. Nice and blunt there. Love that. <laughs> on the nose. On the nose. Yeah. Smashed it right on the nose. <laughs> Don't forget, if you're looking for eShop credit to pick any of these games up, you can get your eShop cards over at our website, switchup.gg. You get yourself 5% back in cash back, and you can then obviously spend that on a future purchase. Thank you to our Patreons, our members, all of you. Enjoy the content for all things Switch all the time. Keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See you.